Thank you for staying with Citizen Weekend. As earlier mentioned, they are youthful, vocal, and flashy, but they really have what it takes to steer the capital city's constituencies towards development. Some have flawed, experienced politicians in the just concluded party primaries. But the question is, would you vote for them? And indeed, will you vote for them come the August 8th polls? My guests in studio tonight, who are expecting Steve Mboga, who is the ODM parliamentary aspirant for Stareha constituency. Um, he has not made his way here as yet, but we must proceed with the interview with me in studio. This evening is Babu Owino ODM and Bakasi East Parliamentary Aspirant and Boniface Mwangi, Starehe Parliamentary Aspirant um, of Ukweli Party, from Ukweli Party. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Let me start with you, Babu. Yes, um, the inspiration, why did you choose this route? Uh, which route? Political route? Yes. I think uh, Lillian, uh, leaders are chosen by God. And uh, an example is that I was being chosen uh, uh, from uh, the university quite a number of times, which means that God loves me. Uh, when we went for the nominations, God also chose me, and I was approved by the people of Mbakasi East constituency. And that shows that whoever is not with me is with Satan. Uh, Lillian, I think uh, leadership is, uh, is, is, is a calling for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Boniface, what about you? Um, what inspired your decision to venture into this route? You're an activist, that's what we know you for. Mm -hmm. So this change of heart and you now opting to go into politics. I got tired of being not listened to. I'm an activist and I'm running as an activist. I got tired of protesting about issues, land grabbing, unemployment, and I thought I could go to parliament and work for the people of Starehe. I grew up in Starehe, so is my home. Uh, land is being grabbed, school programs are being grabbed, there are no jobs, our markets are being closed, they are dirty, youth have been harassed. And for me, I realized that I need to go and serve the people of Starehe mm -hmm. and be the voice in parliament, the voice of the Monainchi, the common Monainchi. So I'm not running as a politician, I don't ever become a politician. I'm running as an activist to go to parliament as the voice of the people. What's your transformative agenda? What change do you hope to bring? Uh, fantastic. I'm running for, number one is actually education. Uh, playground, actually school land has been grabbed in Starehe. We need to reclaim back all grabbed schools in Starehe. I want to bring education. We need to build a library in every single ward in Starehe. I'm going to open community centers. When I was growing up, there were social halls in every, in every ward in Starehe. Uh, people who learned boxing, people who learned karate, they learned in the social, social halls. They've all been grabbed. Mm -hmm. So we either need to reclaim that land. If we cannot do that, we need to build a new, pl new, new social halls where people can go, be able to go, play. They can be able to go. It's also a community center. But I want to go to a community center where people can go chill and learn skills. When you leave school at from 4, you don't have any skills. You don't know how to write your CV. You don't know how to prepare, say, for an interview. I want to have a community center where in every ward you can actually go, learn how to write your CV, learn soft skills to be able to, for you to be able to survive out here in the world. Right, and Babu, the same to you. A lot of people, a lot of critics say that the problem with a lot of politicians or aspirants now is that they're more personality based. There's hype, especially for you as youthful aspirants. There's a lot of hype around the personality, but the issues uh, that you intend to tackle and the change that you intend to bring is not really well articulated to the electorate. What's your transformative agenda? I think uh, Lillian, uh, leadership is about service to the people. As Babu, you know, I swore that uh, the way I was brought up, I was brought up from a very humble background. And I said the way I saw my mom selling changa to raise us up, to ensure that we went to school up to where I am now. I said that uh, if a person cries to me, I'll be of service to this person. Uh, to the youths, I have uh, so many things that I'll do. In Embakasi, for example, there are so many industries. These industries, they lack a person who can be a bridge between their dirty past and their golden tomorrow in the foreseeable future. A person who can hold their hands and talk to the employers to ensure that the youth are employed in these industries. When we you mean dirty past, what do you mean? By the, the unemployed past, youth? By dirty past uh -huh. in quotes means that they are the youth without employment. Uh -huh. Because without employment, you can't do anything. The youths are losing hope. Uh, in Mbakasi, there is an uh, airport. Airport can, uh, has more than 5,000 companies. Each company can employ an average of 10 people. Those are 5,000 people. Uh -huh. 5,000 people can support, at least one person can support five families. Those are 25,000 members of Embakasi East employed at the airport. But what do we see there? Uh, uh, employment opportunities are being created there uh, on uh, different bases. We think uh, there in, there's, there's one company in the airport, I will not mention the name now, that is really uh, is being bribed to employ people. They're uh -huh. telling people to 
to pay them fast for them to employ people. Such companies we will have to close them down in Mbakasi. So your key, your now, key, yeah. Uh, another thing that I'm planning to do to women is to uh, register, to register a circle for women, such that if there is any other woman who doesn't have business, they will come, they will be given a loan, do business, then given a duration to pay back the loans. In my constituency, there there's a problem of water. You find that in Miyango Ward and Mutawala Ward, there's salty water. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, I was walking in town, and uh, there's a there's a, a a kid who said hi to me. When he said, I really smiled, and I, and I felt that this kid uh, could be a leader in the future or a great person in the future. Mm -hmm. But when he looked at the teeth, the teeth were rotten, and I definitely knew that this is my constituent from Mutawala. Or, <laughs> or why would you imagine that that's your constituent? Because of the salty water that they consume. The salty so water. So I have to work on that and bring uh, the fresh water there. Right. And having said, I mean, because we could go on and on um, about what your respective agendas are in terms of legislation as members of parliament or aspiring members of parliament, what legislation, Boniface, um, do you intend to bring to the August House? I think, number one, I want to start with my national agenda. Uh, one of my biggest complaints actually is the wage bill and how actually instead of having servant leaders, uh, we have leaders of servants. We, have, we serve the people in parliament. I think, number one, if we, if we shrink the salaries of members of parliament, you're going to get a bigger budget to be able to do infrastructure, education, development and health. And that means that when you go to parliament, the first legislation actually is actually we must lower salaries, we must move allowances. That is number one. Number two, unemployment in Starehe is because Nairobi City is the heart of, our, is the, heart of the country. Uh, the reason we have unemployment is because of insecurity mm -hmm. in the city centre. We have three markets. We have Ziwani, you know, we have Kariako Market, uh, we have Gikomba, we have Ngara Market. Why do they close in the evening? Why can't we have Nairobi as a 24 economy? Why don't we ensure that there is security for the people of Starehe? Mm -hmm. There is good drainage and water for the people of Starehe. They can go to work day and night, so we don't close that city. When it comes to le legislation, the work of a member of parliament is legislation, legislation oversight. And I'm going to be able to legislate things that are actually that empower the people of Starehe and the, people, the youth of Starehe. So when I go to parliament, the things that I've been pushing for outside, mm -hmm. outside in the streets, but I'll be, I'll be able to do those things, in, in, in Parliament. What will you be pushing for in Parliament? I think I have uh, two groups of people here. That is the students' body and, uh, and uh, their relatives or the parents. Uh, first of all, for the students, I think for the first time in the history, I will introduce uh, a bill for help increment because from 98, help has never been increased. An average uh, student gets a uh, help of around 40,000 Kenya shillings. 28,000 goes to school fees. 12,000 uh, is, uh, is, um, is the only amount remaining for this student to spend in a whole year, which means that a student is supposed to, to spend mm -hmm. 1,000 shillings per month. Mm -hmm. So my first agenda is going to fight for help increment. Another thing is job creation. I think uh, going to parliament for me is really going to fight for service de delivery. Uh, to my people. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're let talking about, just before um, you interject, Boniface, you're talking about pushing for help increment. Um, uh, people would argue that it would be a better option or perhaps it would be better for you to push for free education up to university level. I think uh, it would be better if uh, help can't be increased, then there should be free education. And uh, we know what's happening. The cost of living increases every year, but the help is constant. We've been promised free primary education. But I don't see if it is really free because these people still charge people. Personally, there are like six students in Embakasi that I pay their school fees. At least I help in contributing. In private school fees. Private in, school in, in public, mm -hmm. there are certain uh, requirements right. and certain fees that they are, they are being asked. So I was asking myself, <coughs> the government introduced free primary education. Is it really free mm -hmm. or what is happening now? So I was actually talking about employment. I'm talking about if I go to parliament, we need to decriminalize. Uh, people who are not living, honestly. My mother went to jail in the 70s for hawking. I've been arrested before for hawking because I, I grew up as a hawker. My mother was a hawker. And we need to find a working system to ensure that hawkers in Nairobi are not criminalized and being stabbed by Kanjo. Uh, Buddha Buddha riders, yes, sometimes they're very unruly, but they're earning an honest living. We need to ensure that there's a system, whether it's legal laws, whether the county government comes with bylaws to ensure that hawkers and traders and people who own shops in Nairobi can coexist. Uh -huh. Because every single day, hawking is a problem that happens everywhere. In New York, you can find hawkers in the streets. Do we close the street for a particular hours? But do you also know, you, you do also agree that there can also be a bit of a nuisance when it comes uh, to congestion, when it comes to blocking uh, parking true. areas? I agree with that. It's true. But hawking in Nairobi is a big cartel. 
uh, the county government operates vans that go around collecting. It's called nyamu. I was a hooker. It's called a cannibal. Do you, you know the the elephant who kuni manindovu? So it's called animal because all the money has animals at the back. It copy nyamu is me bribe. Money is collected from through illegal taxation. Uh, what if it's illegal taxation? Well, that money is actually collected and goes to city hall some big bosses and it's been exposed about that. People get stabbed, people get shot while earning a living. That shouldn't be happening. Uh -huh. If we turn a robin dot for economy because of security and ensure that it works, we don't have to criminalize hawkers. You can say between these hours hawkers operate. Num number one, Nairobi should not be a city where that it's the, just chaotic. Right. Uh, and, and, and campaigns tend to be, let's get into campaigns. You just finished a very hectic uh, season with the political party primaries. And we're going to the big campaign um, season now ahead of the August pay, uh, polls. Campaigns tend to be very very cash intensive. Babu, you yourself um, have been put under scrutiny over and over again over where you get your money. I think Lillian uh, is not about the issue of uh, where I get my money and uh, I've explained that several times. Okay, and, where uh, did you get the money to campaign and, uh, for instance? Personally, just concluded personally I, 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 I fundraised people of goodwill from the nation who believe in Babu's ideologies help to fundraise and it's not about money. We've seen people who are who have billions of shillings who have been trans in these uh, primaries and uh, generally money is just a facilitating factor for the campaigns so to me it's not about money, it's about uh, the ideas that people sell. I always tell my constituents that when you see Babu Wino, do not judge him by the coat that he wears or by the shoes that he wears or by the, uh, the depth of his pockets but judge him by the ideas that he gives that will change your life for the foreseeable future to be a good life. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and Boniface, the same to you, um, looking at um, the case of Isaac Mora, who talked about spending millions yeah. um, in the just concluded primaries. Um, he was floored, of course. Sure. Do you have the same capacity? Are you able to raise the same amount of money that will probably help um, your bid towards um, the August polls? I don't have that big budget. My budget is very small. I have an impressive pay bill number. I think I'm the first candidate in Kenya who was actually asking people for money. I normally, people, voters laugh at me <laughs> because when I'm looking for voters to ask for money, 20 bob, 30 bob, guys give me 10 shillings. Uh, I was uh, campaigning a lot without a car. A guy called James came and gave me a car to campaign. I ask people to support my candidature because I'm not trying to go and steal or loot money. I tell people who are actually voters and the people of Sare I want to speak to you. Anyone comes and gives you money and says, here, Pesa, that's a corrupt person because when you bribe someone to vote for so that you can vote for them, it's, they're, they're, going to, they're going to steal. But you also so do someone, run someone a very successful outfit there, uh, Part 254. Yeah. Um, questions coming to questions surrounding yes. where you get funding, you run an office, you have employees. Okay, and no longer got part five four. I used to work there. I'm the founder of part two five four. You have empowered people. When it comes to job creation, I think I've created more jobs than anyone that I know is buying in our constituency. Mm -hmm. uh, I've created we want to empower artists who are singing today, uh, graffiti artists, uh, musicians photographers. If you go out and actually ask people in the creative community, I want I've been one with the biggest voice. How do, does Paul get funding? We used to have partners and the Kenya government knows about it. I'm the only candidate who has declared their, their wealth. I'm the only candidate who was actually, when it comes to integrity, mine is an, an impeachable. Uh -huh. When it comes to being transparent, I'm the most transparent. Uh -huh. And I'm not running to go to power, to go in for the trappings of power. I'm saying you get to parliament, every single member of parliament, and I want a bubble to agree with me on these things. We really have to reduce salaries. Will really you support me on that? Uh -huh. Of course. And you you did, you, you, okay, you're repeating yourself now, but no. because I think we need to move on to other issues. But because, I, yes, you and, did and say that salaries need to, to be increased. Bodyguards are decreased. So I'm saying that if I wanted to make money, I'll be in the private sector. Mm -hmm. I'll be in these big parties. Where you talked about body, bodyguard allowances as well. Uh, Babu here has a very big security team already, even before um, going into the August polls. There's been allegations that... Um, you know, from, from some quarters that you're a shadowy businessman, people are not really uh, sure how you make a living, um, and therefore, you know, just the fact that you're a youthful aspirant and, you know, the message you're sending to the youth out there, um, you have a very flashy lifestyle, same as your um, um, colleague, Stephen Bogo. There's, there's, there's a group of, of youthful aspirants that seem to be very flashy, uh, very flamboyant. Questions coming in about how you make your living. Rather, um, Babu Wino. Thank you, Lillian. I think it's not about how Babu Wino makes his money. I think uh, what is important is uh, how Babu Wino delivers his services to the Kenyans and uh, members of the Mbakasi's constituency. And uh, Lillian, let me tell you something. 
let people not think that if uh, a youth is uh, trying to live his own life, then uh, we must construe it to mean that this youth must be doing something which is illegal. Uh -huh. Personally, as Babu, we know I'm not illegitimate. I'm so legal, and that's why you've never had any case in any police station. Nobody has ever complained. Are you in real estate? Are you a farmer? Are you? I've explained here severally yeah. that I have companies that I, that I do tenders and uh, I have friends of goodwill mm -hmm. that also help me in raising my money mm -hmm. and also help me in, uh, in uh, trying to help me make a living. That's it. The choice of your respective party, um, why you opted to go with your respective party? I think uh, uh, about party, ODM party, I think it is a party uh, Chababa na mama, hiyo ndio party cha kipekee. ODM party to me has the ideologies that I resonate with. For example, the our party leader, Honorable Raila Molo Dinga, it is because of him that now we are we are enjoying the Bill of Rights. It's because of him that we are enjoying the new constitution. It's because of him that now we are enjoying the idea of the multi party. So I think it's because of him, it's because of his zeal, zest, vigor and temerity uh -huh. that makes us as Kenyans to be free. And uh, I tend to believe that Raheel Odinga uh, being in uh, ODM as a presidential candidate and I'm praying to the Almighty God to help Raheel Amolo Odinga, Joshua Raheel Amolo Odinga <laughs> to deliver us from the desert because we are already in the desert. The Jubilee government headed by Uru Kenyatta removed us from Egypt, left us in the desert. Now Joshua Raheel Amolo Odinga will remove us from the desert to the promised land. And uh, for you, Boniface, um, you, you, you told me you, you, you know, you're not, that I shouldn't introduce you as an independent because you're running um, with the Okweli party. Your, your, your choice to go this route and not align yourself perhaps with a bigger party, yeah. um, say like um, na rather the NASA coalition or even Jubilee, going it alone in a constituency where people have opted to um, you know, s uh, um, associate themselves um, with the bigger parties? So, Kweli Party is a truth party. Our party is about being the voice of the people and being when power belongs to the people. Why Kweli Party? Uh, it's because that I do not agree to some of the ideologies of the bigger parties. Uh, we don't share values. And so I went to the Kweli Party. I know people are not going to look at the party, they're going to look at me. And I know people know that when you vote for a suit, you're making a big mistake. Because you find in between the suit, there are a lot of bad, bad people in there. So my confidence lies that the power belongs to the people. People still have the votes. So this thing about euphoria and big parties doesn't apply to us. We don't have anyone running for president. We don't have anyone running for governor or senator. Actually, our party is very small. We only have 12 candidates in the entire country and it's not about the size of the party it's the fight in us mm -hmm. that you know we have a record of fighting for the people of this country that if your land is grabbed if you're in trouble you know that Boniface Mwangi and who belongs to quality party that, that cares for the people is going to be there for you so you have to ask yourself the people who are vying what's your track record where do you come from if you're rich where did you get your money from why are you bribing me to vote for you so let's not play party politics party politics for the bigger boys those that can be able to say it's between the two two Hapa kwa ground, if you're, if, you, if you're a hawker in town or a boda boda rider, the person closest to you is your MCA and your MP. For example, Ngara, Pangani, and Mudurua, and Ziwani, they've been evicted because of those old houses. The person who can speak for them is not the president or any other person. It's your MCA and your MP will fight for you and be there to represent you. So you're convinced that despite the fact that you're going with a very little known party, that this seat belongs to you? I, I don't think electing party is a mistake. Don't elect party. When you elect party, you're going to elect thugs, drug dealers, crooks. But when you elect a person based on the track record, then you can actually interrogate who they are, uh -huh. where they came from, what they have done, what they are promising to do. I have a manifesto, www.bonfasmangi.com, and I'm saying, go interrogate my policies. I'm going to knock doors. I'm going to come to every single person and speak to them. Uh. So ask me what I'm going to do foster her, and I'm going to go about it. Right, Babu, I your think, message uh, be, to the youth. Before, before you go to that, yeah, I think no, I, would, I, would like, I would like to comment on the issue of the parties. Uh, there's a, a, saying that, uh, a, a saying that goes that uh, a woman who falls for a man with a television and leaves a man with a vision, will soon see the man with a vision in husband's television. That makes me believe that ODM party is a party with a vision, a party with prosperity that will make us So, so, so you, you are of a differing opinion? You believe that people sh vote more for parties as opposed to um, individuals? They don't it's follow individuals but they follow waves in, 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 in regards to parties? It's, it's a, it's a two-way thing. One, there can be an individual who can serve better. 
previously in the in the previous government they are independent candidates without parties they are voted in because people believe that they could deliver them right. they could deliver them services mm -hmm. and it, about the parties also if the party has better ideologies then also candidates from that party can be voted in to serve the people. Mm -hmm. Your message to the youth, uh, we're seeing a number of youthful aspirants like I said and there's the feeling that the inspiration behind going for these seats is perhaps power and you know a get quick rich um, scheme. This generation that is looking up to you, your message to them and indeed what you're doing to sanitize politics because there's a lot of hate particularly on social media and a lot of this comes from um, the younger demographic who are very active on Twitter and Facebook and even now Snapchat and what have you. Um, your message to the youth and in just in terms of encouraging them to also seek these elective seats. I think uh, youth have been used, misused and abused and youth have been given false hope. Youth have been promised heaven, delivered uh, to hell. And the youth are losing hope at a higher rate. That's why I always say that an average youth in Kenya, an average youth in Kenya is so poor that he may want to commit suicide, but he doesn't have money to afford a rope to hang himself. That is the reason why there is all this hate. Because we are being promised, the Jubilee government, for example, promised us a million jobs. Where are those million jobs? Now when people see them that they want to vie again, now that is where now all this hatred comes from. But I tend to believe the message that I can tell the youth is to avoid tribalism. Kwa sababu njaya mjaluo, linauma mkikuyu, linauma mkisi, linauma mkamba na mloya. Let us be united, this is our nation. In the next few years, where the people will be controlling this nation. Uh -huh. This nation should not be killed by the current politicians, by the current government. Because this nation belongs to us. Same. You. So I'm vying to give people courage that even if you don't have money, you can vie. If you don't, even, even if you don't belong to a big political party, you can vie that the son of a hawker who grew up hawking, who did his KCC exams last year, can also run for political office. But also running so that I can make sure that they can be servant leader. People going into, into politics need to be able to go and make money, but to serve the people. And I want to tell the young people of this country, we are the majority, about 70% of the population is under 35. The future of Kenya is in our hands, and you can make or break it depending on who you vote for. So as you go for the party euphoria or personality following, ask for their policies. Look at their track record. Do not sell out your future. You know, a mango tree cannot give you a purple. So you have to be able to look and interrogate. So don't be carried away by, by money. People will come and bribe you and give you money. And because you're broke and you don't have money or you, have, you need to buy medicine for your child, take the money. But when it comes to voting, vote right. Do not sell your vote because you're selling our future, our kids' future. Do you, do you have bigger ambitions um, as we close? Is this a springboard to a higher office? I think as Babu, we know, I will uh, serve people in the capacity of a member of parliament. After that, I tend to believe uh, that I can go for governor. And I believe I'll be the next governor, governor in, in 2022. Then after that, 2022 of Nairobi County. Of Nairobi County. Then after that, my ambition to vie for presidency in 2027. So Lilian, Zoea, Raisi, Akuma, won a state house in 2027. Ukuju, freely. For you, um, whether you have bigger ambitions. I, I think I'll be able to let the Pope Sare decide me. August 8th, and then if they elect me, then I serve them. Mm -hmm. And after serving them and delivering what I've promised to do, then they can decide what next for me. Mm -hmm. But for now, my focus is Tarehe. I'm asking for your vote. I'm buying on Kweli Party and also for your donations. Give me some money. I don't have money to campaign. Come volunteer on my team. Send me M-Pesa. Come, let's reclaim back Tarehe. I swam on Nairobi River. When, oh yeah, when you yeah when oh you no, swam, yeah. Yeah. And you, people think you're eccentric. People think you're too much, but if no, Nairobi River yeah. was a river, not a sewer. Nairobi was clean. There was garbage collection. When you swam, clean. what was your experience? Was it, it clean? It was then? a clean river, ninety one. Ninety one two. Yeah. Nairobi was clean. I grew up in places Nairobi was organized, it was arranged. And that can be done by the people of Stare. We can reclaim back us, we can say no boda boda on the pavement because we say so. So my vine is for give guys courage to say no to corruption, say no to impunity and reclaim back our country and our dignity. Because corruption takes care of yourself dignity and poverty is degrading. And if you take back our dignity, we can also fight poverty united without tribalism. So this election Choose policies, not personality. Uh -huh. Go if they give you money, take it because you're broke. But vote for the right candidate. Do not sell your vote. Babu, we're closing now. Um, you started the Tibim phrase 
or word or whatever that yes. is. It's now caught on. I see um, the NASA Pentagon repeatedly, you know, saying that tibim tibim tibim. What does it mean? Uh, Julie, uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Lillian, <laughs> Lillian, sorry, <laughs> Lillian. I think uh, yeah. uh, tibim is a Greek word meaning revolution, political revolution, meaning change. We want change. That is why. Why, why tibim? What, what does it stand for? Anything? I've, I've, I've said tibim means revolution. You know, every day I, I, I would advise you that when you wake up in the morning, pray to God to help you and uh, give you a better future and a good health. And after finishing your prayers, say tibim. When the Satan hears tibim, the Satan will be running away. Now, in the political arena, tibim means revolution. Tibim means change. We want change. That's why when you hear people saying tibim. Nikufukuza shetani kwa serikali. So it doesn't mean anything. I don't because what language is I've that? I've told you what it is. Yes, it's a Greek word. It's your own language. It's your own language. It's me who came with the word tibim. Yeah. And it's me who knows the meaning of the word tibim. And that is what I've explained. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, we wish you all the very best. Um, this so is are you voting for me? Um, <laughs> As you go to state, we'll, we'll take that offline. We'll take that offline. We've been talking to the very youthful aspirants. We're seeing a new wave where a lot of people are embracing uh, youthful faces um, in the race for seats. So that's in the August polls. We've been um, in studio with Babu Owino ODM and Bakasi East Parliamentary aspirant and Boniface Mwangi, Sarah Parliamentary aspirant um, uh, in the Okweli party. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Of course, you can send in your feedback regarding the candidature um, 22422 that's our SMS number and we'll be sampling your views we're back with the day sports stay tuned